Greetings, traveler. So, this is XQN. XQN is, for those of you who don't know him, pretty sure XQN has finished rank 1 Europe more seasons than not. He has more rank 1 finishes than below rank 1, which is absolutely bonkers. Elemental, Mech, Naga, Quilbor, Undead. Obviously, we like a lot of armor. If we are going for the brand here, we have the Coin Naga. We could also take Chenvala or even Snake Eyes. I would say it's not ETC, because I think I like Snake Eyes more to have the money to complete the quest. Oh, it's going to be ETC. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, the one I wouldn't take. Uh, Snake Eyes. All right. Saved. Not the one that I wouldn't take. Yeah, so I, I can see Snake Eyes here to just have more money to complete the quest turn. So if, if you're on tier 4 and then you have extra cash, you can buy more units and then you can cheese your quest. So even though Snake Eyes has low armor, which would give her a more difficult quest, if you have more money, you can complete a more difficult quest, perhaps even faster than other heroes. So that is the assumption. So if he rolls a 3, it's perfect. If he rolls a 1, this is actually great. Because if I roll a 1, I never really know if I want to roll again next turn or not. Let's uh, skip ahead and let's see if XQN wants to save the hero power now or if he instantly rolls it again. Insta roll. I like it. Good. That helps me in my own games. <laughs> so we rolled a 3 now, which means we're going to have the hero power one turn after the quest turn, I believe. I'm assuming it's Coin Naga and level, but I suppose XQN is looking at the Death Rattle minions here. No? Everything but the Death Rattle? Good, good. I like it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I find that that skeleton is pretty good, but I do think they disabled the death rattle quest, so spawning two minions is the only upside. It does not proc a death rattle. So Micro Mummy still spawns a minion and makes you a little bit stronger, right? Gives you those buffs. So XQN, not a huge fan of the skeleton here, which is totally fine. That's why we watch. That's why we're trying to learn. So we want the undead here. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Follow the quest selection process that, you know, as much as these are fun to watch, they're also great for me to cast because it helps me get a little bit more insight and, you know, some of the decisions that these high level players are making different from me. Or if they're making the same, I can be a little bit more, you know, comfortable in those decisions. All right, we see the mummy and the death swarmer, 20 minions dying, seems very good. Doppelganger, yeah, just slam. Okay, yeah, there's not much to talk about, right? His board is perfect for this. This is this is a slam dunk. Okay, we don't. I'll, I'll spend a moment, right, ex like quickly going over why it's a slam dunk, but it should be pretty obvious for most people. He's got the. This is where the skeleton might have been better, by the way, because the skeleton spawns two minions. But the micro mummy is still fantastic for this quest. It spawns an extra body. Death Swarmer. You might not really look at it as a super strong minion, but if you have a few of these undead token minions, it is fantastic. So we're going to skip ahead. And the, the beauty of this setup now, XQN can now just level. Next turn, he's either going to find something to fix the curve. This could be a chef's choice or a lasso, or he's just going to sell the Naga and level. Uh, but he does not need to do anything different for his um, quest to come online. All he needs to do is just, you know, have minions die. So essentially not be too strong, position his tokens more to the front and, and that's it. And that is huge. All right, so we hero power, we roll a six, we definitely level, we got seven gold left afterwards. This is just sell the Naga and level again, I would think. Oh, he's got a coin, of course. Sure. All right. So this is just some uh, snake eyes bullshit, <laughs> which is great to watch. This is this is a common thing, right? Where you might have the idea of, you know, I don't really want to watch a good player get lucky because, you know, I want to know what to do when I get unlucky. But you can pretty much be sure of it that whatever you would do with this high roll is going to be worse than what XQN is going to do with this high roll. That to me is fun. We get to see how he optimizes the good luck. Because in XQN's hands, this is very likely 
going to be a first, just because he's up a tier with a very completable quest, and he's very likely going to make the most of it. This, and, and I know this might be a little tricky, Almarok, because some of the Twitch chat culture I'm not a fan of, and other thing is just good fun. The OFC streamer gets lucky, I think is, is good fun. Oh, he sees the banner boars. The triple mummy does not get held for a six. Primus? Oh, he has the, so maybe he wants that shield for the two, but oh, the laborer, let's go. I do want to see people play with laborer. Honestly, I can see all of these, right? Because he's looking at the banner boars, and if you take the banner boars, you want something to buff, so then you are going to go for the shield. He's going to get Locket online this fight, as long as four things die, which should always be the case. So this is already something very interesting. We see him being very happy to buy double banner boar, and I suppose banner boar is still just a good four drop, Maybe I've just fallen out of love with it a little bit recently. Because my, my instinct is not immediately to go, double banner boar, pog, right? Let's buy it. Let's let's go, baby. We rolled the nuts, double banner boar. So I guess the upside is that he's also gotten a... Um, he tripled into the big shield, and the big shield is the highest tempo unit there. And the banner boars are definitely the best accompany, accompanying uh, unit for that. Right, you get to make a huge shield. Whew. All right, we do have four minions that die. The uh, micro mummy not dying at the start made it a little scary, but we're not that strong. So keep in mind that this is the eight gold turn. XQN was tier four one turn earlier due to that high roll on the hero power. So now he starts generating additional tempo and resources from the hero power. I'd be very surprised if we're not going to level. This feels like we are very strong and we have a tough dusk which we can shield. Oh, okay. Rolls first to see if he gets something worth buying. Beasts are out. There's no Rylag. If he buys the 2-5, I'd be a little bit surprised, but let's let's see what is in and out in this lobby, right? There's no pirate. Oh, it's the Roku getting the Piper. Okay, well, what do I know, right? <laughs> Uh, so you can't play Beast, you can't play Pirate, you can't play Murloc. I mean, it does make sense then that he's going to be more interested in securing his composition here. I'd be interested to see what would have happened if he did not roll the Jazzer, if it would have been a level turn or not. Ooh, freeze another Rogug. This is also very interesting, by the way. I'm gonna rewind one second just to show this, where this is something that can catch people off guard. Here, he had nine gold, right, max, and he sold so that he was up to six. This is something where I will sometimes get in my own way, if that makes sense, where I think XQN immediately identifies, look, this 4-1 has to get sold off my board, probably no matter what this turn, because I don't want to be too weak. So he sells the 4-1. Okay, good. That then puts him to six gold. Six gold, he can buy the Piper and the Rogug from the shop. Okay, all good so far. But after doing this, what I might do is not waste the gold here, which is bad because you're so much weaker. Because I would play the Jazzer as well, I would play the Piper as well, but I might have held the Tough Tusk in my hands because it would feel so ugly to sell and roll. And this is something that it's it's selling, rolling, and being inefficient with your gold a lot of the time is incorrect. So as a good player, you get this internal sort of disgust for like, ugh, I'm about to waste gold. Disgusting. Ugh. Right? So you don't want to do that. But then higher level players know when to break that rule and say, Okay, don't be dumb. I have 27 health. I can play an 11 damage divine shield here, or I can play a 2-5. If I lose any amount of health for having this 2-5 on the board, that is a really shitty deal, because I'm about to take damage, and like maybe it's like 6 damage, so it's like you have to buy 2 of those damage coins, but you only get 1 gold in return, right? Because you only saved 1 gold. So that is something that I try to 
work on as well. Understanding when I need to just take the gold inefficiency line so that I don't end up taking extra damage. All right, so we're staying on tier four, which I think makes perfect sense because he's got some pairs and has an option to get another Piper, so makes another pair. A very common strategy when you're in this position is to stay on tier four, <clears throat> gather good pairs, and then when you hit a triple, then you can level and secure a six drop. So we're going to see if this is the case. I would say from this position, a good six drop right would be Charlie, a uh, Char guy if he wants to continue playing Quillbore. And because there are no Murloc, no Pirate, no Dragon, no Beast, it seems like Quillbore is a very powerful direction to take. There aren't that many alternatives. Mechs are not so strong and Dead are not so strong, right? So there's not that much left uh, as alternatives. Good. So combat seems to be going well enough. Gets the reset on the big minion because it's too large. Can't get sniped. And yeah, I'm assuming we're just going to spend the next turn rolling for either Jazzer, get the gem enhancement, or finding a triple. So let's see. All right, he gets to steal something, but that's sort of the downside of having a weak opponent. You can't really steal anything interesting. Finds the Rogook, and he will take this opportunity to then level to 5. So if you're ever wondering how you transition from a tier 4 situation, who he's got Drakari, uh, into a tier 5 or 6, I guess you get a 6 drop, but you will go to 5. This is a very stable and good way to do it. I'd be interested if he wants to go for the spell here or the Bach. I don't think Bach's that good. I would consider taking the Syllabus. <clears throat> but his uh, gems are starting to grow, so... No. Okay, cool. Hey, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm happy that uh, he's going... Oh, he's got the double end of turn. But he still wants Golden Touch, right? This is not a snap Golden Touch, so that's, that's interesting. Oh, he can swap something in the shop with Fluidity and make it Golden. But I'm guessing he just wants to make Golden Drakari here. I think you just buy Fluidity. I mean, he can also just sell two here and buy a card from the shop, but... That seems inefficient. Okay, so the, the freeze indicates that it is probably going for Golden Drakari, which would make sense because he's got the Banner Boar. He's trying to upgrade the Banner Boars into Chagas. Why not? I, mean, I guess the best case scenario would be to get the Golden Touch on the Drakari and then <clears throat> the triple is Charlie and then, you know, we're truly popping off. Our opponent has another Syllabus, so that would be a really good steal. That's a lot of uh, resources. He has Fluidity, he has to be Golden Touch. Yeah, but I, I don't even think he's going to Fluidity anything in the shop. I mean, the Freeze gives it away, I suppose, right? Misses on the minion, but I guess we just take a big guy. I don't think it matters. Okay, he takes the roll, which makes sense. If if I say, like, oh, it doesn't matter, it means I'm probably not going to play it anyway. Gem transfer is nice. You may as well take the thing that might give you a reroll if it's not going to matter. So we see the Piper being sold instead of the spell generation, which I think is cool. This is something that a lot of high-level players understand. You don't need to make insanely large gems, so it's totally fine to go for, um, you know, the plus whatever it is right now and then keep your spell generation. Bopper is great, though, so yeet. <laughs> Okay, looks like he still wants to keep one Piper. That's sort of interesting, right? What's the internal benchmark there for I want one Piper, one spell generation, but I would rather have one Piper, zero spell generation rather than spell generation and zero Pipers. So essentially he wants to keep one Piper. That might be, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is right now. We're generating six gems off this bopper. All right, yeah, this is starting to become very, very nice. I'm gonna fast forward a bit. This is classic Quillbore, yeah. The the new Quillbore strategy generally involves playing around Smudger and Lubber, but seeing as Lubber was nerfed to tier four, it is a lot more difficult to get that one off the ground. So it is cool to see classic Quillbore with the Drakari and the Bopper, and then going for the Charlie. It's cool to see that being played again. Our opponent is really weak, but 
that's probably because we just had such a fantastic early game that allowed us to go to tier 4 on 7 gold instead of 8 gold, and that really blew the game wide open. Sire goes to the next game, <laughs> or ends the session, <laughs> whichever one. Uh, we found the Banner Board Triple, Let's click the Tough Tusk, I suppose. This doesn't matter. Probably don't need to level. Yeah, this is always funny, right? Okay, do I do I just use a gem? Uh, because if you use the gem first, it might bounce to a minion that you were going to sell anyway. Okay, found the Charlie. Hmm. Are we now trying to find Golden Touch with this Fluidity, or are we just going to 6 to get more Charlies? What's the idea here? Oh, we have Gem Transfer. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, he first put the Tough Tusk on the board because the Tough Tusk still had gems from the previous board. So the good ordering, ooh, do we freeze it? Oh, that's so much money though. <laughs> so the ordering there was very good. Yeah, he's just gonna roll. Ooh, my Charlie. With playing the Tough Tusk first, identifying that it had gems, putting all the gems on the Rogoog, letting it bounce around, and then yoinking the gems from the Rogoog and the minion that he was gonna sell anyway, straight to the the big shield so i can guarantee you that i would have missed that i would not have extracted those extra gems it's the little things man it's the little things so we still have our piper still scaling our gems i'm assuming this is the last round though because i cannot see us playing double charlie drakari and then selling anything but the piper everything else seems pretty good I mean, we have to keep a Golden Rogoog, Bopper is fantastic, Golden Banner Boar is fantastic, and we've only just moved the gems onto the big shield, so this should be the very last turn the Piper stays. But this is, yeah, this is super fun to watch. Classic Quill Boar game. Yeah, and those little touches, like saving the gems off the minion he stole. I don't think there was anything useful on this board, right? I don't think we're grabbing much. Our opponent's still in the game. Unless something weird happens, damage cap is going to be online. Yep. Plus one gold, doesn't matter. I guess you technically take an undead because you might get that tier 4 battle cry. When you eat an undead, you get money, but <clears throat> that's so specific, it doesn't really matter. Right, take the Charlie and roll. Hamul, sure. Let's see if we get Golden Charlie. No. Is he interested at all in Rogu? I mean, a second Rogu next to that Golden Banner board is cool, but man, it seems so unlikely to have the board space. Buys the brand's blessing. Okay. So probably wants to prepare for a Jazzer. And then if you get the Jazzer, you already have the blessing. That'll give you plus two health on your gems, which is super relevant if you're playing this many gems. All right. Wants to buff first, so... I guess the argument here is that if he ever needs to sell this Charlie, then it doesn't have a bunch of gems on it. But all right, we're freezing the new hero power, I'm guessing. What would be the giga high roll here? I mean, Reno is always fantastic. Secret guy is great. Mm -hmm. Shutterwalk if he finds the Jazzer now, because it'll have Brand's Blessing, it's not bad. Has fluidity as well. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh lord, this is popping off. Ah, unfortunately for our opponent, they're playing mechs, so they're going to die. Now, in our opponent's defense here, there's not much you can play here. No beast, no demon, no dread. I mean, honestly, the five bands are very fair directions. Beast, demon, dragon, murloc, pirate, these are all very fair in this meta. So if all of those are out, there's not that much left to play. They might win. Yeah, they might win the fight, but they're not going to win the game. All right, I'll grant you that. I thought we were bigger. I'm going to be honest. It'd be nice to see the percentage here, but two big deflecto bots. Uh, I was already on my way disrespecting the mech player. Ooh. Do we even play that? We don't, right? There's no gems on it. I think that's pure mech scaling. Oh, Reno. <laughs> Let's go. He actually hit the Reno. Uh, gem transfer has to be worth it. I mean, if only to just 
use it on a Rogug, right? You can get out of Bopper if you want to. I mean, for one gold, it's a bacon for one gold when you're playing this. Yeah, it's basically like mutinous spell. You get to uh, you get to just get out of anything you want. So I suppose we're gonna golden a Charlie, unless we find the golden Charlie in the shop. But if you find the golden Charlie here, would you still not rather make one golden and try to <laughs> roll for the second one? I don't know. That's an interesting one. I right, found the 2-5. I guess you steal the gems from the bopper and sell that? <sighs> for freezing. That's interesting. Yeah, Golden Charlie, sure. I'm trying to follow along here. What's the decision? Because I'm thinking we want board space. Because I think I want to use fluidity on that 2-5. Okay, we're, we're not going to do it on a rope, right? At least I'm not. Maybe XQN is. No, he's just gonna sit. Ooh, our our locket is not gonna be active though. Yeah, yeah, he realizes he has to cast it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, that's smart, that's smart. He wants to run it twice with Brand's Blessing. I thought we had the money. I guess we don't, huh? Two, three, four, no, we're short, you're right. So the reason why he has to use the uh, the gem transfer here, even though it would be better to hold for next turn, is that he's not going to be able to steal a minion. Oh, there's a Charlie on the enemy board. Or something with gems, yeah. Honestly, whenever you're fighting against Quilbor, you can't really go wrong, because you're either going to get a lot of gems or you're going to uh, get a unit you want. This actually makes a lot of sense. I think... When I have Locket, I need to pay way more attention to whether I can steal something with gems. I like how he takes a Charlie immediately. He's like, ah, big minion? Fuck that. Give me Charlie. Alright. There we go. No, you you made a very good point here, chat. He's... But see, this is another thing. Where... Normally, it is... In, oh my god, he gets the second gold, Charlie. <laughs> normally, it is really bad to free something when you're hanging two gold. Like, again, right? The feeling I get when that happens is like, Ugh, I don't want to freeze with two gold hanging. But he just understands that, yeah, that sucks, but if I play the Jazzer with the Blessing and the Fluidity, that's worth more than that two gold. I think our, I think XQN here was thinking if he could buy the 3-1 first with Brand's Blessing and gain two extra gems. But I don't think that would have made sense, yeah. Because then he would have to sell the Deflectobot, and the Deflectobot is actually very reasonable. All right, well, that's two golden Charlies. It's golden everything, basically. Everything that matters, all the scaling is golden. Yeah, all the scaling's golden. Yeah, double golden Charlie, golden Drakari, golden Ragook. Let's just watch this beautiful end of turn. The, the Drakari had 104 health. Let's pay attention where everything's going. And Drakari is not even getting buffed by Bannerbore, right? But... <laughs> Jesus, dude. Alright. So the Drakari went from 104 health to 188. And that's like the thing that's getting buffed almost the least. Because it's... Yeah, the Dragook went super big. And his damage is far, far more, right? Because he's had Piper on the board forever. So he gets way more damage than he gets health. Even though he had that little turn with the extra health. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Deflecto was a 70-70. That's probably a better benchmark. 229 damage. Matador, sure. I mean, what do you even do now? Fluidity gives you board space, but you don't really need board space. I guess you check your opponent and see if there's anything your opponent could do to you. Yeah, get good spells. Lower the stats. Yeah, this doesn't matter. It's one of those turns. Just roll, roll, roll. Alright, let's fast forward and watch the fight. Yeah, 229 damage on the Fleck, though. Let's watch that again. The damage increase is probably far more impressive. Wee, 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 wee. 363, and that's just one unit. Yeah. All right, well, 
if our opponent doesn't die, or if we don't die, haven't looked at the board yet, but no, we have 500 health, we should be fine. We're just gonna yoink that big cleave. So things are just gonna keep getting worse for our opponent. All right, we do a little bit of damage, but now I guess gem transfer. <clears throat> gem transfer is fantastic, because now then he gets to steal the gems off that deflecto or whatever else, and then he gets to play a big cleave. Eh, I mean the pair is fine, but it feels like cleave. I think you look at your opponent's board. Yeah, he's trying to figure out his cleave good here. He has a lot of shields. I think it is. I think you buy the shield. It's a bit weird. Yeah, you don't really want to lose all the gems on that deflecto. But yeah, maybe he just rolls the transfer anyway. I mean, he could hold his Far Reaper. Oh, Spirit Swap is too good here, I think. Well, it depends on how much our opponent has, actually. If our opponent does not have any kind of health, yeah. But he can make a big Matador, which is also insane. Alright, he's just gonna see if he hits the transfer. No. Alright, I wanna see what's going on here. This is where I would like an option to quickly have a look at my opponent's board, but let's fast forward and let's see exactly what's on the board. So the Vulgin hero power can be a little bit overkill if, if our opponent just doesn't have the numbers, but I think I saw something with a f with 500. <clears throat> yeah, Zephy for a golden matador is also pretty damn good. But this is where Locket is so oppressive in the end game. If you're in a 1v1 situation and your opponent is taking one of your cards every turn, it's essentially a cat hero power that activates every turn. It's so silly. Um, 200, 600, yeah, okay. 700. This is a very good Vulgin hero power. Because now that Cleave has enough damage to be relevant versus the big, big health units. All right. Seems like we're dealing damage again. And then we just steal another Cleave, I suppose. <laughs> oh my god yeah this is this is tragic man i mean what can you what are you gonna do sell your big cleave you could take a matador to have a matador pair the cleave comes with shield doesn't it oh my god you could just let the cleaves buff each other this is really embarrassment of riches you can do whatever you want here i think you take the foe and you roll for a gem transfer <laughs> oh boy oh he gets extra gold as well nice Bot glow scale, sure, just to put on a Charlie or so. Fluidity, I don't hate. Stealth. Oh, he's gonna put the Fur Reaper far back then. Hmm. Are we just like selling our banner board here? I mean, we might. Banner board, no! Okay. <laughs> Gotta max those stats. Honestly, I think you'd rather roll. <laughs> But whatever. Yeah. This is cool to see him optimize here. Right, he's not going to move it all the way back, but he's going to pretty much ensure that he's getting cleave value. And then the cleave's buffing each other, the Charlie still goes off. Woo! That is disgusting. Yeah, he's, he's just essentially, yeah, and then perfect timing on taunting. He made it so that the um, <clears throat> the Bramble Witch had no shot at, at targeting the Cleave or the Rogug, and it's just so over. It's like an Anaconda that's just squeezing until you're dead. <laughs> that's what the 1v1 versus XQN feels like. You're just like, oh man. This is so hopeless. He's killing me. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> All right. Well, GG's. That was quite the game. Absolutely ridiculous.